today I've got some cool replays for everyone from um, the first Beast Mode Circuit Tournament. Evidently he's uh, running some small events over in FL. So there's 16 people, single elimination. I didn't play in it, but one of my teammates did, uh, Corinna. She played this cool Machina cat thing um, that I thought was pretty neat. So we're going to be showing off all her replays. She ended up having a pretty solid run as well. So uh, hopefully we can see some pretty good big gameplay here. Uh, let's go ahead and start. I believe this was a person that I played against uh, in Deck Devastators, and they were also on Machina. So yeah, they're going to open up setting the dust shoot, but holding it here, um, which was probably fine, but continuing to hold it at this point after you've set call is a little weird. Actually, I think setting call period is a little weird here because you have, like, the gores and stuff. So maybe I just held the call, and then if Corinna spaces, you chain it. Um, generally, if I set dust shoot plus, it, like, other back row, I'm just shotgunning it every time. But Corinna is playing super low committal. She doesn't have a lot of good stuff going on in this hand, so I definitely get that. Uh, I might have been just tempted to just attack with Arabellum, but then if it's hamster, it gets, like, really rough. So I can see just holding everything. So she's going to go. She hits the... Uh, correct target on the 50-50, which it would have been really bad if she'd hit the dust shoot there. So, kind of another reason to maybe not set call, but it's it's not not the biggest deal. Romulus is going, or Romloms, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, gonna set um, another card, and now just firing the dust shoot, because you definitely gotta fire this at some point. Gonna hit in with the Arabellum, but the book is going to be used to stop the Dyna from getting outed. But Corinna's got tons of back row here, um, so I think she kind of has to out the Fossil Dyna with this Book of Moon. Probably going to use it there. Yep, that makes sense. And then Brain Kai's. <laughs> oh, man. Corinna just always has brain control. Always. Never doesn't. Going to go for the Call of the Haunted 2 onto that air bell and getting the rip, but the Gores is really good here. Very devastating. And finding the um, DD Warrior Lady off the top just slams it. Not not worrying about Torrential or Mirror, just going for it. Sometimes you just got to go for it. I think that might have been the right play. Corinna, going to top that cat, which is pretty good, but it doesn't fully deal with the problem. Um, probably going to judgment that uh, that gear frame. Yep. So now she's top decking. She needs to find something, or she's going to get run down by the scores. She draws Mirror Force. Has to use it right away. Opponent gets set bottomless. She doesn't draw a monster, but fortunately, neither does uh, her opponent. She draws Charge. Uh, I think, in hindsight, Romlom should have maybe just judgmented that. I know it would have been really greedy, but like if you draw a monster, you just win at this point. Well, actually, hmm, she had, she was able to bring back the fortress there. Hmm. But the fortress would eat the bottomless either way. So then you would just draw Ryko and poke for 200 per game, actually. But maybe that's too greedy. I don't know. Um, but going to eat the judgment on the, um, on the gear frame. And then flips up the Ryko again, not drawing a monster. So, um, or not drawing something that you could summon and then poke over the Ryko for game with. So Corinna getting some lucky breaks here, but the Caius is going to be lethal. So, very hard fought game number one, going to go the way of Rom Loms. Here Corinna's just going to set Raiko pass. Her hand is not that great, it's like too many monsters. Um, she's not popping the Trooper, a little bit greedy with the Isidra, but it's going to pay off. Uh, she's going to be able to get the Fortress and the Arabellum hit. Going to rip a card. She rips like the best one too, hitting the Hamster. That's so dirty. Uh, just going to go for a Android Pass. Ramon's probably just going to Dust Shoot here because you don't have anything else. Yeah, there's kind of just nothing going on, and Corinna's going to poke for game. Hmm. Ramon's got really unlucky that game, I'm not going to lie. He, he got Giga Sacked. Uh, anyway, opening with a Gear Frame in game number three. Always nice to see that. Corinna just going to go Charge. Probably set multiple behind Raiko. No, just setting one, fearing the uh, Pro Set Storm. Kind of reasonable, I think. So now the opponent's set multiple, you definitely just set the deep prison. She summons Thunder King, just attacks. Um, yeah, uh, not good at judgment there. Probably right to not judgment, because you have, like, Sidra, and you have Brain Con, but should maybe have gone for Brain Con Sidra there. I don't know. Because, like, this Thunder King is an issue, and <laughs> this is not good. Uh, now, like, you just have to make a terrible play at some point. I don't even know. You gotta do something. This Thunder King is actually owning in game number three. Alright, so Brain Con being used. And then, like, can't search because Thunder King is still on the board. Oh, man. I don't know. I guess it stops 
the Thunder King from like negating the summon, but like now it's just gonna eat a Caius, and like you're just dead anyway to summon Fortress. Oh, that Thunder King was a problem in game. That that card did work. This card, amazing card in, in this in this particular matchup, stopping all the searching and all the specials, just absolutely amazing. So, well done for Corinna in round number one. Her opponent played pretty well too, but it was just not quite enough in that situation. All right, round number two, uh, up against Wolf One. This tournament had a lot of like recognizable names and like good players and stuff. So even though it was a small tournament, it definitely very impressive um, for Corinna to do well here. Gonna eat the zombie, uh, the goblin zombie off the deep prison, which is really good. Dust shoot, man, she's been dust shooted like three times so far. I'd be salty, <laughs> um, but it's not gonna matter super. Uh, it's not gonna matter a lot because she's got such a good hand. So yeah. Just gonna go for the turtle over the um turtle over the hamster. Opponent gonna allure rather than Caius. And then why didn't they Oh the other diva they hard drew man, that's so bad. That's unfortunate. Oh no, this this is just so much gas. Corinna's just got lethal here, actually, with the cat. Yeah, okay. R.I.P. Whew. Unfortunate. Unfortunate for Wolf One. Gonna just get obliterated in game number one. And draws both the divas again. No. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> well, that's, that's Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know why he didn't summon the, the Trigodia. Generally, if I open Trag, I just kind of want to get my value out of it, you know? Um, going to go Thunder King poke. Just no worries. Mirror Force or Torrential. Just summon Thunder King attack. So now the track is going to come down. Card plays pretty well against Thunder King, which is nice in these post-board games because Thunder King is obviously a card that's very good against zombies. Kai is going to be used on the Trigodia. Uh, the, this is probably going to eat a D-Prison. And then Smashing just to try and stay alive. Makes sense. Going to go for the Gear Frame. Going to try to hit for game. and I don't, I don't think that Wolf Hunt has a way to stay alive here. He's just dead. Just like hardcore bricked, which can happen with the zombie deck when you when you see hands like this where you just like opening multiple divas and like aren't able to get a zombie established. So rough luck for Wolf One. Corinna just like styled 2-0 with, with her crazy sacky hands. Not to downplay Corinna's skill or anything, but she is a known sacker. This is a fact. Alright, so we're up in finals uh, against or semifinals, my bad. Semifinals against Lord Voldemort himself. Um, so Corinna's gonna be going second against Vayu Turbo. Uh, she's gonna summon Cider straight away. Gonna poke. Eat a D-Prison. That's fine. She goes set, set. It's probably just gonna get caius Yep. And then Caius gonna hit into Mirror. And then, I don't know, Corinna's the type of greedy person to summon Arabelle. Oh, no, she's just gonna set Raikou. Okay. <laughs> my, my prediction has failed me. Alright, but now the Raikou's gonna be flipped. And maybe should have judgmented that. But he doesn't know Corinna's hand, so... It's conceivable that he wouldn't, but he's just going to judge him at the Arabellum anyway. So, in this situation, definitely probably would have been better just to stop the Raikou. Um, he's going to top deck into a Dad, which is just going to get dropped here. Uh, yeah, that's scary. Bayou players don't have Dad one-time challenge. Um, but Corinna can actually out this pretty well. Um, and she has an Avers as well, which is pretty good in this situation. Going to let her grab a plus two to see if she can maybe draw something useful here. Um, but she's not. She's going to draw two two useless cards, or, you know, kind of useless. No, not completely useless. She's going to have to crash the fortress, but it's, like, still okay. Um, she can kind of... Actually, she's dead. Right? She's dead. Never mind. She's just dead. This is just lethal. Yeah, okay. RIP to Corinna. Going to have to uh, see if she can do better in game number two. Dark Arm Dragon, crazy card. What can I say? She's going to go set both of these... Um, which is probably fine. Uh, I don't know if Bayou players really run mind control. Uh, she's going to summon gear frame. The situation is always awkward because you don't want to bottomless the gear frame. Warrior Lady going to be used. I assume Raikou will just pop the back row. Yep. Milling a Plague is pretty good. And uh, as we can see, Lord Voldemort here has uh, Dark Arm in his hand, which is pretty scary it's gonna get used again Corinna makes a an upset face which is definitely the justified way to be feeling in this situation but Corinna always has brain control as i've mentioned before so she's gonna take it 
and then pop the back row and um, go for lethal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Karina. <laughs> okay. You get mad at dad, but then you just sack with brain every game. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so just gonna go set Thunder King again coming in. Maybe people, more people should side Thunder King, uh, given how much, uh, the Machina deck seems to be emerging into the, the metagame, because it's pretty damn good in this matchup for sure. Um, gonna hit in, but gonna get deep prisoned, and the Warrior Lady gonna take care of the Greffer. Gonna probably just, just good to, uh, set two and chill here. Lord Voldemort going to go into an armed wing, but it will eat a bottomless. Raikou going to pick off a back row, which is good because she immediately tops the gear frame that would have gotten pulling the rug. So very convenient sequence of events for for, uh, for Karina there. Another armed wing going to come down, probably eat a deep prison. Yep. And just going to go in with the Machina Fortress. Probably that will eat a deep prison. I think... It would be reasonable to Book of Moon here, and she does. Spirit Reaper going to stall this out, though, potentially turn this into a bit of a grind game. Dust Tornado going to be used in end phase. Gale is going to be able to half the Fortress. Go for Goyo. Goyo take the gear frame. And then she's going to flip Raikou, pop the back row, which maybe she should have just gotten rid of Goyo there. Because now Goyo is just going to take the Fortress. Um, but she's going to be able to hit over the gear frame, but she's got to get rid of this fortress, and she doesn't have an immediate answer. Okay, Avers, though. Just going to rip Avers off the top. Okay. Sure, sure. Why not, Karina? <laughs> Why not? Um, going to go for the gear frame. Probably just going to summon another fortress in defense. Is there a reason she didn't just, like, crash here with the, like, equip gear frame and get rid of it? I don't know. I feel like that's what I would have done. Because, like, this was just strictly worse than doing that, I think. But she top decks a force and just brings back a fortress. So that's not too bad. Uh, she's dead out to brain control here, but fortunately, uh, Lord Voldemort does not have it. But he's going to play right into Gores, and she's going to live on 50 with the go. Oh, no. Krina, you're not going to win with 50 life points, are you? <laughs> she has a fortress that she could bring back to. I'm going to set the my body. So you definitely just summon this gear frame here. Dust Tornado going to be used? Is this lethal on board? Holy shit, it is. It's like exact 69. And and uh, not able to stop it with the oppression. So Corinna going to take a disgusting 50 life point W here in the end. Very, very close call. Very epic. So now we move on to the final match, which is up against Ryanite, who is also playing a mock in a deck, which is kind of wild. This deck is just everywhere now. Uh, his is on Gear Town and some discard traps. It's a bit different. It's kind of more like his uh, KFC version, but I think without the KFC stuff, it's more of a pure Machina stuff with like limited removal. Um, I don't know how much Ancient Gear stuff he's on. I saw Beast, but I think that might have been post board. So I don't really know what this list is. I would have to see it for sure. Uh, Arabelle, I'm going to eat a Geki Break, which I'd have been tempted to judgment in that situation, honestly. Uh, can we just, like, take a moment to appreciate that Corinna's open s judgment, uh, dust shoot going first? Just ruthlessly sacking Ryanide in this game. Ryanide's gonna search for his main deck, Zombie World, which is, like, not, not too bad in these Gear Town decks, honestly. Because in this situation, it, like, means that stuff like Sidra and Caius are not on the table to out this. Which I believe Corinna does main deck Sidra, and she draws it, and then she realizes she can't do anything with it, and probably should have put this in defense mode either way, but... Uh, yeah, going to just get run over, and then Geki Break going to be used, and her brain control, uh, which is always present in her hand, cannot help her. It's in the opening hand, game number two. It's still here. How is it still here? How many times did she resolve brain control? We need to, like, have a have a Corinna brain count, like, count on the screen, honestly, at this point. Um, it was like a, a whole meme in Deck Devastators, like, Corinna has lost 800 life points. <laughs> Because of how many times she just freaking drew brain control. But we're getting off topic. Uh, here, she's of course going to win the 50-50 on the Arabellum rip. Because why wouldn't she? Why wouldn't she? Corinna's that good at the game. Corinna's that good. Gonna attack. This is interesting that Ryanide's on multiple faders. Makes me wonder if he's playing like Caius or something. Or maybe he's just siding these for certain matchups. I'm not really sure. 
The True Nate's not going to help much here. He's down, like, 15 cards. And, like, Corinna can just Brain Con and, like, Avarice and, and, like, get even more disgusting advantage here. So I think this game number two is looking pretty over. Looking pretty over to me. She's going to mill, tribute. Yep, yep, yep. Good luck, Ryanite. Uh, I think he's just dead to normal summon gear frame. Yep. So we're going to game number three. To a deciding game number three in the grand finals. Can Corinna pull it out? Let's see. So she opens a pretty good hand. It's going to attack. Opponent going for Fortress. Oh no, is this just lethal with limiter removal? That's tragic. Wait, wait, wait. Was that lethal? Oh, she must have done math wrong or something. 5k over... Trooper is 46. Should put you on 34. Yeah, she's dead. Damn. That game was over before it began. What the hell? <laughs> Lethal through Gores. Whew. Limiter removal. Sometimes it's bad, but sometimes it is crazy, and we'll just end the game. So Ryanite is actually going to win game number three and win the tournament, but still pretty impressive showing for Corinna. Like I said, lots of good players in this tournament. We saw like a lot of a lot of recognizable names. Um, the... Well, Romloms was a machine of player that topped Index Devastators. There was Ryanide, who obviously uh, we played against before on the channel, I think. Or at least in Meta Breakers we did one time. Um, there's Lord Voldemort, who's won many events. So definitely an impressive showing for Corinna, even though it was a small tournament. I think the Cat Machina deck is really cool. I think Machina becoming like a, a potential new contender in the meta metagame is definitely... Um, an interesting development. The like main engine with Fortress Gearframe is has always inherently been very crazy, so it's cool to see the deck doing well. Anyway, that's about going to wrap up this video. Be sure to leave a like, be sure to comment, be sure to subscribe to the channel, become a member if you're interested, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.